Okay, so travel tips to help ease back pain or at least manage back pain. That's hopefully the main reason why you guys came today. So this should be the stuff that you can take home and actually use today. So I'm gonna talk about three main uh, tips to help manage back pain while traveling. So number one is bring your own back support, okay? I do not mean the actual like, you know, big old back brace straps, right? I'm not a big fan of supporting for a long period of time because your muscles get weaker over time because the brace is doing the activity that your muscles should be doing. But what I'm talking about is something like this. This is a lumbar support. There's multiple versions of this. And when you sit, you can put this at your low back and it can give you a little bit of support. Some people don't like having a lot of support and some people like having um, a lot or a little, right? What's great about something like this is you can always roll up a, um, a towel, you can always roll up a sweatshirt and you can always put it in there. Now, regardless, most people are not gonna like that whether you're sitting with a back support or not, sitting in one position for a long time still gets uncomfortable, right? So if you're forced to sit for a long time on a car ride or an airplane, and we'll talk, the next point is about getting up and actually trying to move around a little bit, but take it out for a little bit, then put it back in. It changes the stress points on your back, um, and so it's not the same points on your back that are getting the stress the whole time. What's so cool about this, this is a personal one that I've used since you know my back injury, is um, it self-inflates, right? So when you open the thing up, it inflates fully, right? So it's fully supported, then you can squish it down, or you can lean against it until it's to a position, and then you can lock it up and then it's only half full. And so then it's only half as much support. Same thing as if you took a towel roll and you rolled it all the way up versus halfway up. Um, but this is great. I can also, if I open it up and I fold it and I undo it all the way, it folds pretty small that I can still fit it in a backpack. And then if I let all the pressure off, it'll fill back up, right? Um, so. I can give recommendations. There's probably a thousand different types of these out on the market. Um, I told you why I like this one and why I use it, but something is better than nothing. Um, and um, the good thing is the price point isn't terrible. Now this is probably more expensive than your standard just lumbar roll, um, just because of the self-inflating and the adjustability. I honestly don't even remember how much it cost. Um, but um, if you're like me, most of the people in here probably have back pain. That's why you're here. Or at least you've had it in the past so you want to prevent it. Now, if you're like me, you're going to walk out of this door and you're going to say, that was good, but it's not going to work for me. Or I'm just too busy to go mess with that. Or I don't know which one to get, so I'm not going to go get it, right? I was the same way. I had a PT friend who bought this for me because he knew it would help and he bought it for me and I was too stubborn to get it for myself. Um, or I just, you know, you just don't think rationally sometimes when you're in pain. So there are options out there and if you're stuck on what to get, ask one of the therapists here or ask me and I'll help get you guys uh, the right information for the right thing for you, okay? So moving as much as possible talked about this in the past that some people are saying that sitting is the new smoking, right? Smoking causes all these health problems, right? People are saying that sitting is the new smoking, okay? And I think it's an oversimplification, but it has some justification, right? Sitting is not bad for you. It's the lack of movement in your day that bothers you, right? So if you sat all day, that's fine as long as you reverse all those bad things that you did, well, or not bad things, if, if you, the time spent being active is proportional to your time sitting, right? So there's some people who have to sit for their job, right? They have to sit behind a desk, they have to sit there all day, but if then after work, 
they do stretching, they work out, they go for a walk, and they do some things to reverse that bad posture of sitting all day long, then they can kind of equal out and get a net kind of you know loss for the end of the day. But if you're forced on an airplane to sit for a long period of time, first of all, grab an aisle seat if you can, because you can always stick your feet out in the aisle as long as the cart's not coming down, okay? Um, shoot, if you have back pain, it may be worth paying the extra 40 bucks for the extra leg room or the emergency exit row seat so that you can stretch your legs out a little bit, okay? Now most planes, it's always kind of a pain in the butt and you feel like you're, you know, have to, you know, get in people's way. But as soon as the, the seatbelt light comes off, I don't care if you have to go to the bathroom or not, walk up to the bathroom. You stand up, stretch up, move around a little bit, you know, just kind of get your blood flowing again. Um, even if you're just, you know, you may look funny, people are going to look at you weird, is why is this lady walking up and down the rows? Who cares if it's going to fix, help your back pain when you get to where you're going, right? If you're on a road trip, if you're driving somewhere, plan ahead, stop at the rest stops, get out, stretch, move around. Um, you know, if you've worked with therapy in the past and you know which stretches are good, then do some of those stretches on that rest stop. If you don't know, try some that we've suggested in the past or get on with therapy and we can show you what to do. But really, you want to try to move every 20 to 30 minutes, okay? We talk about this in general life, like set a timer while you're watching TV, set a timer while you're at the computer. Same thing applies, is if you can get up and move around every 20, 30 minutes, that's going to be better. Now, I'm stubborn too, and if I'm on a road trip, it's like, let's just get there, right? But if I'm in pain and I'm gonna suffer more when I get there, or it's gonna make it worse in the long run, then, you know, it's not worth it. Gary, I saw you standing up, I don't know why, but maybe it's because his back was hurting and he wants to stand up and stretch his legs. Good for him, I was like, great, you know? I oftentimes go to conferences and stuff, I always try to have a side of the room uh, spot or I'll just get up and walk and stand in the back of the room for a little bit because I don't want to sit in one spot for so long, okay? I know logistically that's not always as easy as possible, but try to find ways to not sit, you know, for two hours at a time. All right, tip number three, drink plenty of water, okay? A lot of times when we're traveling, there's a lot of things going through our mind. How do we get there? What time do we leave? Did I bring my toothbrush? You know, did I, you know, leave the garage door open? You know, did I lock my apartment? You know, did I, you know, there's, there's lots of things that you're thinking about to try to get out of the door. And a lot of times what's forgotten is water, right? So when you are dehydrated, you do not have as much nutrients to give to your healing tissues or your compromised tissues, right? I've wrote an article in the past about how your discs are filled with water. If you're dehydrated, your body will pull the water out to its most vital parts that it needs, your heart, your lungs, all the stuff that's your internal organs, and it will pull some fluid out of there, which reduces disc height, right? That's less shock absorption in there, it's just less lubricants for your joints and it just puts you overall dehydration is a big cause for people to have aches and pains um, and so staying hydrated can help I mean if you're going to talk about staples of health it's physical activity nutrition drinking enough water and sleep right so it's not surprising that drinking enough water would help with your back pain while you're traveling now a lot of times I hear from my dad um, that well I don't I I don't want to bring water to the airport because they won't let me take it through security I'm like yeah that's a good point however I bring an empty water bottle through security 
and they have these cool water fountains at most airports, especially, or they have it at Austin Airport, I know for sure. They have the fast filler up water fountains where it actually fills up the water bottle, not, you know, the little spouty thing that you drink out of, right? It's actually a button that fills up the water bottle. It's fast, you got it. Once you're past security, you have that water with you the whole time. If you're traveling um, on a road trip, it's a little bit easier. You pack it, make sure you put it on the checklist, remember it, drink it, right? Because that can help a ton, okay? Um, and if you forget it, I mean, yeah, you know, airport prices, you know, $10 for a bottle of water, or whatever it is. Um, but if it's gonna help with your back pain and not make you miserable where you're going, um, then it's, you know, sometimes it might be worth it.